coming up. I felt a wall of heat. I didn't even realize it. the house was on fire. A patrol officer climbs into a burning home in a dangerous attempt to save a woman. He asked me if anybody else was in the house, and I said my mother. At that point, we were looking around to any entry points. It looked like windows were our way to go. Plus. I was running within feet of the flames. A police officer sprints into a raging apartment fire. Everybody out! I was very worried. I did not know if they all got out safely. No matter what the emergency, true heroes step up to save the day. Caught in a fire is frightening, but for someone with limited mobility, unable to escape, it can be downright terrifying. When a 91-year-old woman was trapped in a fast-moving house fire, her only hope for survival was a police officer willing to put his own life on the line. Hackettstown, New Jersey, a cozy community of 10,000 people. It's also home to one of the largest chocolate factories in the world. We have a pretty tight-knit community. There's a lot of foot traffic, a lot of attractions, and it meets a rural area as well, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. I grew up in Hackettstown. My family, we all grew up in Hackettstown. It's a comfortable, friendly place, and we just love it there. Linda Monack lives in her childhood home, where she cares for her elderly mother. I guess we had been in that house for about 55 years. Linda and Patrol Officer Ryan Blankenship are both from the area, but they had never met until June of 2023. It was probably around 2.30 in the morning. I didn't even really realize what had woken me up. In the beginning, I thought my mother had gotten out of bed and had gone off into the kitchen. Linda got up to check on her mom. I went down the hallway. And when I rounded the corner of the hallway, I felt a wall of heat. I didn't even realize it. the house was on fire. It's believed that an unforeseen electrical issue had ignited the family home. It was now an inferno. It just was an unbelievable wall of heat. So I turned around and went back to the bedroom, and that's when I called 911. Linda's home was filling with smoke fast. They told me to put my head out the window. But all she cared about was her mom's safety. I kept turning my head to call for her to come, but there was so much smoke in the room that nothing could come out of my mouth. I had to keep turning back to the window. Soon, a dispatch was sent out to first responders. We're burning order on the first floor of the private house. 753 Police officers are often the first to arrive to a house fire, so the pressure is on to do everything they can until the fire department arrives. I had just got off the phone with my fiance and then this call came in, and it was for a structure fire, and then it was updated that there were people entrapped in the building and weren't able to get out. As patrolman Blankenship raced to the home, another officer was pulling up. He told me to jump out the window. I was hesitant at first, but then his authoritarian voice, I jumped. And then he asked me if anybody else was in the house, and I said my mother was. At that point, Officer Blankenship arrived. Immediately upon getting onto the street, it was already smoke in the whole street. It was kind of amazing. Blankenship and the other officer got straight into hero work. We immediately run up and try to evaluate everywhere, see if there's anywhere we can get in, and see if there even really is a way out or not. We pretty much checked as far as we can around the perimeter of the building. We tried to figure out who was left and where they might be, but it was difficult because the person who was already removed from the building wasn't quite sure herself. Officer Blankenship knew that time was running out. He had to work quickly. With the fire spreading and firefighters still en route, Blankenship decided to enter the burning building. At that point, we were looking around to any entry points. The best thing we could do is try to access it any way we can, and, and there, was, there was not a whole lot of options. So it looked like windows were our way to go. Blankenship didn't have any firefighting gear, but he still crawled to a bedroom window. You're not really prepared to not breathe. So it was kind of, a, kind of a shock to me. I had a little bit of time, and I had to go. I wanted to make it as quick as possible, find the person that we were looking for. I did the first time. Luckily, they were not too far. 
But the police officer was running out of air. Coming up, with little time left, Officer Blankenship fights through blinding smoke in order to save a life. I often wonder what was he thinking when he was doing that, but I think that all he was thinking about was my mother. But first, while it's super important to prepare your home and your family for a fire, planning for all types of disasters is important. That includes floods, lightning, hurricanes, and of course, tornadoes. Did you know the U.S. fire departments respond to nearly 360,000 house fires each year? And that a fire can double in size every 30 seconds. If a fire starts in your home, exit swiftly. Be sure doorknobs aren't scalding hot and stay low and below the smoke. Finally, once you've made it out safely, stay out. Remember, stay calm, have a plan, and be aware. Your well-being depends on it. In June of 2023, Linda Manick and her elderly mother were caught in a raging house fire. Linda was able to escape through a window, but her mom was still in the house. As firefighters were en route, police officer Ryan Blankenship knew that he had to act fast. He went straight into the house, but the thick smoke and searing flames were simply too much to navigate. You're not really prepared to not breathe. So it was kind of, a, kind of a shock to me. In that time, I had to think very quickly, get back out, get some air, and get back in so I could make a move. My body was just moving, and, and my mind was moving, and both in unison, and I kind of made it happen as best when I really thought I could. The officer ran back to the window, got some air, and then rushed back inside. Got to the person I needed. I was able to, to scoop him up, get him up and out, and I, I told him that I located her beforehand, and, as I was in there, I, I told them that uh, I'm going to get them out. By this time, firefighters had shown up. Ryan handed her to first responders waiting by the window. It was easier to get the person through the window than it was me to get through the window. They were quite a bit smaller than me. So next up was getting them to the emergency squad so we could at least get them checked out, make sure that they're breathing OK. Linda and her mom were treated for minor injuries, but they know that if Officer Blankenship's fearlessness was not as bold, the situation could have been so much worse. I often wonder what was he thinking when he was doing that, but I think that all he was thinking about was my mother. And it was just a, an amazing feat that he performed. Not long after, Linda was fortunate to attend a ceremony where Officer Blankenship received a commendation for his heroic actions. I was fortunate to go to a little ceremony in my township. It was a tearjerker moment for me just to be able to see everyone and thank them. Everyone should be so proud of them. They're just amazing. It was just a, a day of work. It's not I feel good, but it's just you got to do it again if it comes again. He deserves recognition he really does is to jump into that house and grab her and pull her out and that just shows you like what the core of him is all about coming up a fire tears through a crowded community landmark police department you need to evacuate your house i was very worried i did not know if they all got out safely Multi-unit apartment fires pose significant challenges for first responders. Because the buildings are so large, dozens and sometimes even hundreds of lives are in danger. One police officer found himself fighting one of these dangerous blazes. Although he had no firefighting experience, this hero knew exactly what he had to do. In cities across the United States, the YWCA provides essential services to women and families in need. One of their primary ways of supporting communities is to offer affordable housing. We have several tax credit properties that offer below fair market rate for housing. In Linwood, Washington, just outside of Seattle, Trinity Place is one of these essential living facilities. 
It is 20 units of housing that includes health and wellness support, it includes employment assistance, and includes all the things that is needed to help bridge all the gaps that have been missing for certain families. There is a center space where people can gather for picnics, to play, and to socialize and build community. Trinity Place offers a sense of security for at-risk families, but their stability would be rocked when a fire erupted in the summer of 2022. Police officer Matthew Saul was on patrol that night. I saw a call coming in at Trinity Place, so I started driving and it was almost on scene when a report of a structure fire came out. I turned that corner and could see the northernmost building was already ablaze. Fire was spreading from the garage up the side of the building. And I knew not only that I was the first there, but fire takes them a few minutes. Officer Saul immediately rushed to alert everyone in the building. Get out of your house! It would spread from the garage level and was already hitting the second and third floor. I knew that as soon as that fire spread, it was going to affect other apartments as well. There was not a lot that was going to prevent it from spreading to the other buildings. I just knew I have no ability to fight that fire, but my concern was life and limb would be jeopardized if I didn't get in there quickly. So I went in and tried to start notifying as many residents as possible to evacuate. Police department, can you evacuate your house? Even though he had no official firefighter training, Officer Sal's instinct to protect the residents kicked in. I used my collapsible baton and just started pounding on people's doors. I just wanted to make sure that people had as much time as possible to get out, get their kids out, get their pets out. Everybody out! I've certainly been in situations similar, so I was able to get in there and get as many people notified as possible. I was running within feet of the flames. You don't really expect the level of heat, the level of smoke, how hot it's going to be, or just how much that smoke affects your ability to breathe. Once you're in there, it, it gets real, real quick. Meanwhile, the residents also jumped in to help their neighbors. They came together and they banged on each other's doors. They made sure that everyone that was on that property got out safely. As the fire continued to spread, Officer Saul and brave residents were able to clear everyone from the blazing building. Look at 84, the whole building is on fire, it has been evacuated. At this point, the fire department was pulling up to the scene. Our station 15 is real close, and those guys are some of the best in the country. They got there quickly. By now, the entire roof was on fire and spreading rapidly. They're up on the roof, the building's still ablaze, they're cutting holes in the roof. I have the utmost respect for the fire department. Meanwhile, administrators from the YWCA were called. I received a phone call at 12.40 a.m. from my facilities director. She called to tell me that there was a fire. And I knew immediately from her tone of voice that I needed to get out of bed and get over there. By the time she arrived, firefighters were battling the flames. Almost immediately upon my arrival, I called our housing services director, Cresha Green. She told me that there was a fire and I needed to get there as quickly as possible. When I got there, there was fire trucks everywhere. I saw firefighters on the roof trying to put out the fire and it just seemed like everyone was in a panic. I was very worried about the residents. I did not know if they all got out safely. Coming up. Trinity Place in the aftermath. I was heartbroken to see what we had put years of work into destroyed in a matter of minutes. But first, a few important fire safety tips that everybody should know. Large structure fires are inherently dangerous, with flames often spreading to multiple floors in just seconds. These fires, like any other, also pose the threat of spreading to neighboring structures. Should you find yourself in a building next door to a raging fire, carefully and methodically exit your structure and maintain a safe distance until the blaze has been extinguished. Fire spread quickly, so always be sure to be mindful and listen to the first responders. Remember, when it comes to staying safe, awareness matters. When a raging fire ripped through a community apartment building, police officer Matthew Saul was one of the first to arrive. 
Get, get out of your house! He ran into the burning complex, banging on doors. You're getting the back way! He was letting everyone know they needed to evacuate their apartments immediately. Everybody out! After successfully getting people out, the blaze was spreading, and firefighters were doing everything they could to save the rest of the complex. As far as you could see in every direction, there's fire trucks, ladders, medic crews. It seemed like every rig from the South County Fire Department was on the adjoining street and the shopping complex across the street. By now, first responders raised the alert to two alarms, and crews set up a wall of water. They went into overdrive in an attempt to stop that monster fire from spreading further and igniting nearby trees. Meanwhile, administrators from the YWCA Trinity Place started making a plan while dealing with the devastating emotional toll. I was devastated. I saw the damage, but then I also saw the families that we serve every day. They came running up to me and asking me, what are we gonna do? I was heartbroken to see what we had put years of work into, decades, in fact, be destroyed in a matter of minutes. The families that come to us already experienced trauma through some capacity. They had already experienced homelessness. And to have this fire take them out of their homes was just devastating for them. Officer Sal ran back to the station a few blocks away and began gathering anything he could to help the victims. I was finding blankets, I think we had some stuffed animals. Just anything I could get back into a box and run over there, especially for the kids. A child has just lost all his toys or lost the little world he knows or she knows. They've just lost everything. Hopefully provide a little bit of uh, light in a dark world. Hours later, the fire was out and fortunately everyone survived, but the damage was horrendous. We lost 10 units in that fire. So that's 10 families. I knew those units weren't gonna be accessible for those families. It makes your heart heavy. I've worked with these families for months, if not up to years, in trying to build their stability. In under three hours, the YWCA team had found hotels for all the folks who lost their homes. The following morning, our sponsor, Belfour Property Restoration, was there to help. They were there before the sun rose, so we were very grateful that they were on site. They helped us with everything we needed immediately. It was a, a major fire in four units, and then additional damage throughout the rest of the building. You get the fire spread throughout the entire building, and then when the firefighters come in, they have to douse the entire building with water. So you get fire damage, smoke damage, water damage on top of that. Belfort immediately began dealing with the fire and water damage. When we go in and we look at the restoration process, we're not just thinking, okay, let's get it back to the way it was. We want it to be better. We want them to go back and the building is better, it's stronger, it's more resilient. It's like keeping hope alive. We can see things coming together. I'm mostly excited of having it all done and welcoming new families into that community again. The YWCA, it's special to us. We work with them a lot, and just seeing us be able to go in immediately and help them restore these families' lives, it's very important to us. It's what we do. As Trinity Place looks forward to a shiny new facility, they also look back with gratitude at everyone who came together to help. From their own colleagues, to brave residents, to resilient firefighters, and one police officer with guts of steel and a big heart. That's what we do. Everyday men and women strap on their, their duty gear and go out to try to make a difference and try to help others and save lives. Your best chance for surviving a house fire is to be prepared. Make sure to have an escape plan and evacuate the building as quickly as you can. Leave the rest to the skilled first responders. Following these steps can make all the difference. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you next time, right here on Hearts of Heroes.